be surprising. It will so, be soon enough. Yeah, it will be. It will be soon enough. It's going to happen. Um, you insist on going maskless. Right. They're going maskless and they're not social distancing. And you can see them sitting next to each other in the committee rooms. So that makes our job really, really difficult. And the most important thing that we can do is help all of you and everybody else out in our state who uh, cares about clean air, clean water, the climate, and so many other important issues to participate. And it's going to be more complicated this time. And uh, it's going to take a little bit more um, work on the front end. Uh, you can't just walk into a committee room and testify. Um, there's going to be some advanced work that you're going to have to do in order to have your voice heard. So we decided to put this together and try to help everybody, you know, down the path of how do you contact legislators? How do you testify at a hearing? Um, how do you know what's going on? And so uh, Connor, Durf, and I have been working on the website and working on putting together a fact sheet that is now on our website to help you do that. But we're also tonight going to walk you through and share screen, a screen and show you, really just show you the nuts and bolts of how you can know what's going on and how you can participate. So thank you for being here. Uh, we already have an awful lot of bills. Um, so we have thousands and thousands of bills that have been requested. Uh, we have quite a few bills now that have been introduced. For example, Senator Antney just submitted five bills today. They've now been introduced. Senate bills 84 through 88, and they are all intended to keep Coal Strip open or prevent um, any adverse decision uh -huh. by the Public Service Commission or the Consumer Council in regard to coal. So those bills are not up on our website yet, but they will be shortly with descriptions. Um, and as soon as there's hearings, you can find that out there too. It's gonna be the, the theater of the absurd um, in so many ways this session. Uh, so I'm not gonna go through a laundry list of bills we're working on. Uh, Durf and Connor are gonna give you a couple highlights of the bills that are, have been introduced that are on the table now. Um, and then we're going to get into the nuts and bolts of how to participate, and then we'll answer any questions you have. Um, and if you don't get your question answered tonight, please feel free to contact any of us, um, whether it's me or Durf or Connor or Carrie. Um, we are happy to try to help you uh, help us, because <laughs> this is all going. This session is going to be all about people and people letting the legislators know that they're out of line. So um, thank you for being here. I'm gonna pass it off to Dirk to give a little update on water and mining issues. Yeah, thanks, Ann. There are a lot of bills dealing with water and mining and a lot of bill titles that we just don't know what it is exactly that the bill will do at this point because there's not language associated with them. It's still very early on in the session. So I'm gonna speak sort of generally and go through these different bills that we're gonna be grappling with this session. Um, and as we get further into the session, we'll be able to give you bill titles, LC numbers, so that you can track down the information a little more easy, easily. Um, and uh, everything that's associated with it. But water quality wise, uh, there's a, a, a big concern that they're gonna be amending the Montana Water Quality Act in a number of ways. Uh, the most concerning being a bill that would reduce uh, the ability for non-degradation review to kick in. In Montana, we have a non-degradation review process that is triggered if there's uh, going to be water quality impacts, quality impacts, but it's also triggered for water quantity impacts, which goes beyond what the federal requirements are. They've attempted to repeal this before, I think 2011 or 2013 was the most recent attempt. And uh, there is a bill title that will deal, that addresses non-degradation review. And I suspect that's what it is. Um, but until I get a copy of the actual language, I'll have to wait and see. 
There's also a bill that will um, dramatic, well, it will carve out a water rights exemption for the Berkeley pit. Um, we're still hashing out what it ex is exactly that we are going to do with this. This is part of, part of a much larger proposal that involves a potential hydrogen facility in Butte, um, which Ann and Connor can elaborate more on. But uh, anytime we see an exemption uh, for water rights, that, that can be concerning um, and that can get complicated. So we're, we're, we're neutral and still investigating this to get more information on it at this point. But that will be a big issue this session and something that we will certainly have more to say about. Mining. There is definitely going to be legislation to roll back what is called the, bot, the bad actor law. In Montana, if you are a hard rock miner and you default on your bonding obligations, you cannot get a new hard rock mining permit unless and until you pay the state back or reclaim uh, the land for the uh, uh, the costs associated, or the you reclaim the land that uh, you damaged on your previous operation, and so um, this has been applied recently to Hecla and its CEO Phillips S. Baker uh, to a lot of consternation amongst certain legislators. There's probably going to be a bill that will not outright repeal it, but will. Uh, basically neuter it so that it only applies to corporations and not individuals. The problem there is that uh, all you really simply need to do is to create a new corporation. And so we're going to see a whole shuttle game associated with trying to avoid a bad actor designation um, and will make it basically meaningless. Uh, I'm also pretty concerned about bills that may try and roll back or eliminate Montana's ban on cyanide heap leach mining, uh, which was passed by ballot initiative some years ago. Um, I haven't seen anything directly on it yet, but that's something they've tried many times before and certainly can again. And then broadly speaking, we have a whole list of bills called access to justice. These are bills that deal with our ability to go to the court system, our ability to participate in the process associated with permitting. Um, there's a bill right now that would revise venue laws. Uh, that's where, where we're able to file basically uh, a lawsuit. Uh, oftentimes you'll see that we are, are going into a, a court where uh, the, the dispute originally arises, which puts us in the county in which these are taking place and, and, and additional political considerations can often come into play. Um, there's a bill just, just uh, I read today called a, the prohibition or of alteration of law by state court. This is sort of a funny one, but basically what they're saying is in this, or what this bill would do is it would prevent the court system from having any interpretation or uh, issue any order on a statute. It's really kind of bizarre, um, but it's sort of indicative of what um, what we're dealing with, which is uh, legislators feel emboldened and they don't particularly like the court system. And so we need to take these types of bills really seriously because um, that is often our backstop. Um, bills dealing with attorney's fees, there's a few out there. This is actually really important and it's getting down into the weeds, but um, the legislators are interested sometimes in potentially cost shifting attorney's fees. And so uh, small organizations and individuals are often very apprehensive to take cases if they have to take on a risk of attorney's fees for suing a company like Exxon, um, where they have 10 expensive Washington, D.C. lawyers, and um, that could amount to uh, a lot of money. And so what it is, is it's a way for them to basically uh, chill our interest and ability to go to the court system. There's also bills dealing with critical infrastructure and protests. Uh, this is obviously geared towards 
Keystone XL and Standing Rock. Um, I'm thinking it's probably going to be increased civil or criminal penalties associated with it, but I haven't seen any language yet. Steve Gunderson is carrying that bill out of Libby. And a big one for me, a really big one for me is right now, the legislature's two Democratic votes away from being able to pass constitutional referenda. So they pass it and then it would go on to the next ballot to be voted on. Uh, this is concerning particularly for our right to a clean and healthful environment. And so what, we got to do everything we can to make sure that um, the, the friendly legislators don't bargain away, I guess, the farm. Um, that, you know, this is, this is absolutely critical. And so we need to maintain those numbers and not see that type of legislation and referenda. So that's big picture, some of the issues I'm dealing with. Um, and do we want to go over to Connor next? All right. Hi, everyone. Question. Oh, yeah. Back to uh, DERF. Yeah. Who's, who's introducing that second one that you mounts, announced just before this last one? Um, the critical infrastructure or the attorney's fees? Um, I think it was the attorney's fees. Okay, well, uh, there's a few of them. I, I think it might be Bill Mercer. Um, I'd have to go back and look, but there's two or three. And again, it's we're so early in the session that, you know, these, it'd be premature to say that any one legislator is going to introduce it at this point, I guess. Um, so it's just a bill draft request? Yeah, that's right. That's all I'm asking. I just, if you could clarify that when you talk about these that it's either just a request or it's actually a bill and whose name is on it, that would be helpful. I absolutely will do that from now on. Thank you for that helpful suggestion. Um, and Wilbert, all the bills I talked about from Senator Ainty are bills. They're Senate Bill 85 through 89, I believe. Um, um, and you know he's back. Ain't he never gives up. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. And it looks like Jason Ellsworth is the uh, one of the the requesters slash sponsor sponsor of the the attorney's fees bill. Okay. Thank you. All right. So um, I'm just going to discuss a couple of bills I've been tracking right now. If you haven't met me yet, my name is Connor Ploger. I am the new Clean Energy Program Director at MEIC, uh, Brian's successor. So I'm still getting used to everything right now and dipping my toes in the water. But two bills that I'm paying particularly close attention to, uh, the first is House Bill 17, which was introduced by Representative Hamilton in Bozeman. Uh, this bill was actually heard today by the House uh, Taxation Committee, and what it intends to do is modify the alternative energy tax credits. So if you are a resident in Montana who is using alternative energy, i.e. solar, wind, et cetera, you have the opportunity right now to enroll in these alternative energy tax credits if you meet a certain tax liability. Right now, these tax credits roll over from year to year, but what Representative Hamilton hopes to do is change that so it becomes refunded. That becomes immensely beneficial because now there's no longer that tax liability threshold. Anyone, include, including low-income Montanans, can now apply for these alternative, alternative energy tax credits, which makes them more appealing for everyone involved and, of course, helps Montana's economy in general. I was speaking uh, with our friend Andrew Belenis at the Montana Renewable Energy Association. Some of the figures he pointed out is that $7.2 million uh, in revenue have been generated from small businesses from this tax credit alone. So making it more appealing can only be more beneficial. However, we are concerned about whether or not this bill will pass. It will be sent to executive action tomorrow, which unfortunately makes it a little iffy 
So if you got some time tomorrow morning, be for, be sure to call uh, Governor Gianforte, anyone we can get a hold of and let them know that we want this to pass because we want this tax credit to remain intact and become more beneficial rather than, uh, unfortunately it could become repealed. So we don't want that to happen at all. The second thing I am keeping a track of, keeping track of, and you are more than welcome to tune into this tomorrow morning. I'll be going over that later in this presentation is Senate Bill 7. What this one hopes to do is instead of addressing the alternative energy tax credits, this bill will instead hope to address conservation energy tax credits. It will hope to reform this bill um, so that it provides more financial benefits for those that uh, promote energy conservation. So if passed, the amount received from the tax credit would be increased from $500 to $800. It would also become refundable just like uh, what Representative Hamilton is hoping to do with House Bill 17. So that's a very brief overview of what those bills are hoping to do. We're hoping to keep these tax credits in place and just make them more beneficial for more Montanans. Uh, this is crucial as Montana moves towards renewable energy, of course, but it also becomes essential in a post-COVID economy where more low-income Montanans may be struggling, and therefore we need to provide as many financial benefits as possible to encourage them to use renewable energy. But uh, like I said, I'll be speaking later in this presentation. Uh, so if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them then. Or if you have any immediate, I can answer them potentially right now. All right, I'll hand it over to Ann. And I'm going to hand it back to Durf. Um, you know, there are so many bills that we're looking at that we've seen language for that haven't been introduced yet. The meat and potatoes of what we're really concerned about, they really haven't been introduced yet. So you can keep joining these Zoom calls every Thursday to get more details on the latest bills that have been introduced. Um, and now we're going to turn to the, the how-to portion of this. Um, we're going to start with Durf. He's going to go over our website and the, the information you're going to be able to find on our website. And then Connor is going to take you to the Legislative Services website and walk you through how to use it. So Durf, go ahead. <laughs> All right, I'm uh, having to open some system preferences in order to share my screen, unfortunately. So. While he's doing that, I am going to tell you one thing about the an issue that we are going to see a lot of this session that's going to be an overarching problematic theme, and that is hydrogen um, and a proposed hydrogen facility in the Butte area. Uh, MEIC certainly favors green hydrogen. That means hydrogen that is created using renewable energy, clean energy sources. It's very, very energy intensive to, to get hydrogen. You have to strip off the H2 from the O in water. Um, it is a really interesting technology that has a lot of promise, but it is really not quite ready for prime time yet. And we're really concerned about their weakening a lot of laws and advocating for gas um, by, by saying it's really for hydrogen, um, hiding behind hydrogen to get all sorts of um, weakenings of our renewable energy standards or to get uh, weakening of our regulations for gas plants. So stay tuned on the hydrogen front. It is gonna be a really big theme this session. Um, Durf, are you ready? Um. I'm going to have to switch to a different computer. And okay. so let's go to registering to testify. Connor, do you want to go? Connor, and then I will, I will make sure that gets fixed. Sounds good. You don't okay. post privileges. How do I turn it off if I want to? Oh, there we go. OK. So if you could just give me a thumbs up if you can see my screen now. Okay, great. Okay, so what we're gonna start with right now is uh, the request to testify. 
So let's say uh, MEIC has alerted you about the bill. Let's say it's the bill tomorrow, SB7. Mm -hmm. There are some important rules to follow uh, before I get into that. So one of the most important is that because of the makeup of the legislature this year and how we'll be testifying, they have to be notified in advance if you wish to participate remotely through Zoom like we are right now. So if there are any bills you wish to testify on um, either in opposition or in support of, you have to register, register before noon the day before or that hearing. So again, just register before noon, the day before that hearing. That will give uh, the legislature enough notice that you wish to testify, and therefore they can prepare for that as well. So if you want to testify, you're going to go to ledge, so leg.mt.gov. It'll take you to this page, and you'll see this box right here, request to testify, remotely upload your testimony. And when you click it, you'll select the bill. Um, so let's say, let's just do the first one. Let's say you were testifying on House Bill 2. You would select your position. And don't worry about this too much when you're selecting your position. <coughs> or on the fence, but know you would like to testify about this bill, just choose one of the two, either proponent or opponent, don't choose informational witness, just ignore that for right now. And just click that for right now, you can notify them ahead of time, I'll get into that, that you wish to change your mind, either go from proponent to op opponent, but like I said, as for right now, if you don't know your side, just choose one of the two. Uh, so we'll do proponent, and you'll just type in your full name, your email address, and if anyone is wondering, you're more than welcome to write it down right now. And you can Connor, talk. Connor, one thing that they don't forget that do, do you represent another party other than yourself? Yes. And if you are, then you have to click yes. Otherwise, you can keep it clicked no. Yes, which is, of course, important to recognize as well. So if you are speaking on behalf of the Environmental Information Center, like I would, then that's what you would write. Then you would include your phone number. City state of residence, so Helena. And here is where it can get a little tricky. So if you would like to submit a written testimony, then you're more than welcome to upload a Word document as you normally would with other applications. Just choose files, choose the file you wish to upload, uh, and then you're more than welcome to do so. I would always recommend if you're going to submit a written testimony, be sure to use a word processor such as Microsoft Word and type it out beforehand. Don't type it out here like they suggest, but of course that is an option. However, if you know that you're going to be doing an oral testimony instead of a written testimony, this is what I have done. So I have just told them I would wish, I wish to participate orally. Just let them know. Um, we'll be sure to update you in any subsequent meetings regarding this if you don't have to do that. But I just did this for my testimony just to be safe to let them know. And then, of course, be sure to click this box down here that says, would you like to request to testify before the committee via Zoom? Click it, yes. Then they'll ask you if you'd like to use your phone or computer. Of course, if you have a computer, uh, I say that would be the more preferable option. However, if you'd like to use your phone, you're more than welcome to call in to the meeting or download the Zoom app on a smartphone like an iPhone or something like that. Then once you're ready, you'll click submit. Uh, and Connor, one brief thing, you have to put something in the written testimony section. You can put anything you want. You can say not available at this time. You could say none, um, but you cannot click submit unless you have something there. But don't feel obligated to have written testimony a day before. Um, if you're like me, that doesn't happen. Right, right. And yeah, like I said, we're learning about this every day. So sorry about the misinformation there. Yes, be sure to put something in that box, like Anne said. So of course you'll hit submit and then you will receive a few emails from the legislature. 
Uh, what happened to me the first time I did it, I received four confirmation emails. So if something like that happens to you, just ignore that. They're just working out the kinks right now. But then a few hours later, they sent me a follow-up email. That had the Zoom link. So be sure to check your inbox continually uh, up until the hearing if you wish to participate, because it won't be sent with that initial confirmation email. They will send another email. So be sure to make a note of that. All right. So let's see. Okay. So um, let's say, for example, or actually, I'll do that later. Okay. Okay, so let's go back home. Okay, so there are a couple things to make note of as well. The first one is to view the hearing schedule. Click this, I'm just gonna open it in a new tab. And then um, this will allow you to keep track of which bills um, are coming up. So you can do two day hearing, two week hearing, let's do two week. Um, we're going to do both chambers, uh, specific committee, let's say yes this time, and I'm going to go with energy, submit. This may take a minute or two, but as you can see, it will then pull up this list of which bills are currently scheduled to be heard by this committee, and then you're able to keep track of when they'll be hearing certain bills. Uh, let's say you want to look up that specific bill now. So there's one thing you can do from this homepage, look at bills, this box right here. Sorry, zoom being iffy. Can you, still, can you still go on the law's website to look up bills? Yes. Yes, and that's where he's taking you. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah, so we know that we wanna look up House Bill 34, find out what it's about. And then once you're here, of course, it's still the same. Uh, if you're used to it, you can click right here to look at the PDF, find out when the hearing is, et cetera. That, this one, as far as I know, hasn't changed too much. But let's say you now want to look up a legislature, uh, legislator, you want to find out their contact information, um, et cetera. If you have a few questions, ask them. So you can click that. And they give you a lot of methods to find the legislator. You can either just look at the roster as a whole, just view by map if you're looking for someone in a particular location. Uh, if they even give you some tips as well. So they're making it uh, relatively easy to find your legislator as well. So let's see if there's anything else on this website I need to go over with you all. Does not have to be. Okay. So um, I'm just going to give you a couple of quick tips for Zoom right now. So I'm going to stop screen sharing, go back to normal. So let's, uh, when you are actually participating during the meeting, it's not going to be like this is. They're going to send you a very specific link. And all you're going to be able to see is the committee room where they're meeting and then the legislators that have agreed to participate remotely when you are a part of that. So it's kind of a different format than what you're expecting, but they still make it easy for you to use. If you look at your Zoom screen at the bottom where you see participants, chat, share screen, et cetera, the, the only option they will have is raise your hand. And that is how you actually participate during the hearing. So during the hearing, they're going to ask uh, first, are there any proponents inside the room? They'll bring in people who have been sitting in the hall into the room to testify on behalf of the bill in opposition of the bill, et cetera. But after they invite people who are in the building to participate, they'll then move on to the remote participation, which is everyone that has decided to participate via Zoom. Once that happens, they'll ask you who would like to participate and the option at the bottom will be raise your hand. That is how you participate. Don't feel a need to click that immediately. Just give yourself a deep breath and click that. Uh, the reason for that is just pretty simple. If MEIC is te testifying on behalf of the bill, of course, we'll provide you with as much information as possible. But if you would like to listen to an MEIC representative and Dirk or myself speak before you do, in case you want to pick up on anything we mentioned, just give yourself a minute to click that raise your hand feature because that's how they're determining 
the order of who speaks at that point. So just give yourself a second, click it. That way, so one of the MEIC reps can testify uh, before you get an opportunity to do so. And then is there anything else <laughs> missing, Anne or Durf? Yeah, if they want to go before us, they can hit that hand raise button quickly. Um, <laughs> the only other thing to just keep in mind is legislators are watching you testify, supposedly, on a large screen in the committee room. And um, they will not see a, a video feed of you. They will only see whatever your saved, um, your, your picture is. So on here, for example, I see Slim's name, but I don't see his picture. If you don't have a, a photo, um, what is it called? A photo of you um, on your Zoom account, then they will only see your name. I recommend when you testify to your Zoom account, just add a picture of you, a photo of you, so that that's what that's the still that they are watching while you are testifying. Otherwise, it's super impersonal. We've had some legislators try to change this rule where they can't see people um, via video, um, but they've been unsuccessful. So I'd say the best thing to do to really personalize your testimony is try to at least have a photo of yourself um, on your shared screen. So I do that when I, what, let, how do I do it? I don't see it right here right now for whatever reason. Um, it's a profile picture that you can put up of yourself, view options, whatever that is. Um, I would recommend getting a profile picture on your Zoom account. That's all I have. Okay. So uh, the laws database can be yeah. a little bit. Just, just one yeah. little thing uh, concerning if you're going to testify by phone. There's something about star nine and star six, but I couldn't figure it out. That's to mute yourself and to unmute yourself. So if you, I, I believe, isn't that what I heard, Connor, on the testimony today? All right. Mute. Uh, mute. Yes. The, the star, the, the star nine and the star six seemed in a judiciary hearing, I think, yesterday, uh, that you would ex you would express your proponent opponent side by one or the other, but frankly, uh, uh, Chairman Usher was confused, which of course was confusing to me too. Connor, what did you do today? So, oh, you didn't participate by phone, so we don't know. Right, right. Um, I, that's, you're raising a lot of great questions. So you know what? I will try to participate through phone one time so that I can have better answers for you regarding this, uh, that process. I've only been using my computer with Zoom. Um, so I've just been taking their instructions for granted. Um, so if you're having any issues with that, I think I should have experienced that personally. So I'll do my best to participate via phone so I can find out whatever kinks there are. I apologize for experiencing that. Any other uh, questions, comments? Bob, we'll find the answer to your question and we will get back to you directly. And we will also include that on the fact sheet that we have up on our website. It's not there now, but we'll, we'll adjust it once we find the answer to your question. I have okay. a question. Yeah. Will we be able to hear other people testify while we're waiting? Connor? Yes, yes, you will be able to hear people as you are testifying. You're going to be part um, of the overall hearing. So you'll be listening into it as if you were just listening in as if you weren't a participant, um, if that makes sense. Okay, thank you. Yeah, of course. Oh, yes, that is one other thing I would like to mention. If you are, uh, in general, just very confused about this process, that is completely understandable. I will be testifying tomorrow morning with the Senate Taxation Committee regarding the bill I was discussing earlier. So if you would like any example and you're up that early, you are more than welcome to tune in. It starts around 8 a.m. 
and you can listen in and just see how it goes. All of their previous hearings will also be archived, so you're also able to find those as well, and you can listen in to see how this process is working itself out. Do we then have to uh, notify them a day ahead if we want to listen in even? No, if you are just listening in, you do not have to notify them, just tune in as soon as it starts. And if you would uh, like me to demonstrate how you can do that, I can do that after Dirt is done. Okay, um, I'm seeing a couple of questions, but what I propose is that we move on to the next section of the agenda, which may answer some of those questions. And then we're gonna have some Q and A at the end as well. Um, so if I'm not able to answer your question, you can certainly ask it there, but I wanna make sure that we're able to get through our full agenda. Um, the laws database can be kind of overwhelming in terms of what you uh, can find on there and what bills may be moving through the process. So on our website, um, and you can see my screen, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, I am just on meic.org and we have a tab right up at the top called Montana Legislature, which I'm going to go to here, uh, which is dedicated toward to all things uh, 2021 legislature. On it, we're going to be maintaining a bill tracker and um, along with that on the left you, or on the right hand side, you can see this column that says legislators. So I'm going to talk about both of these things briefly so that you guys can have a better understanding of, of how to engage because what we do is we take the most important bills, the bills that we think um, will matter the most in the session for our members and for the general public. And we put them up here and try and make the information about the bill and the contact information and what's going on with the bill easily accessible. So I would click on, I'll click on the bill tracker here. And as I mentioned, the session is still in its infancy and we're still, we're still populating this, but I have two bills up here so far. They're both clean energy bills, one that Connor testified on this morning and one that he's gonna testify on tomorrow morning. And um, as you can see, the, the bills are ranked or categorized by the bills we support, the bills we oppose, and the tabled bills, which will become uh, more populated as we move along in the session. And then we can you can view these bills by issue area. So, if I was interested in only clean energy bills, I will click on clean energy. And theoretically it's gonna have a list of, of both clean energy bills that MEIC supports. And right now there's no uh, bills that we oppose, but there will also be a list of clean energy, energy bills that MEIC opposes if we oppose any. So. Um, House Bill 17, Expanding Clean Energy Tax Incentives. Actually, let's go to the other one here, which has a hearing tomorrow, SB7. Um, so what we have here is a description of what exactly the bill does, which you can absorb our position on it. Uh, the status of the bill, you can see that it's scheduled for a hearing tomorrow morning and the staff contact with uh, Connor's email right there. And if we want time of the hearing on those, so we know that. Excellent. We will make sure that that uh, happens. I'll make a Hello. note of that Hello. right now. Um, and along with that, uh, we usually have the committee hearing, which I will also, or not the committee hearing, excuse me, the committee that it will uh, take place in. Senate tax. Okay. So we will make sure that happens. Um, this is a unfolding process. So any suggestions you have would be very helpful. Uh, we'd like to uh, hear from you about what we can do better. So um, at the top, you can see that uh, Senator Jill Cohenauer's name, who is the sponsor, is hyperlinked. So I'll go to Jill and uh, we have a profile for each legislator. Senator Cohenauer uh, is from East Helena. She's in leadership.
This is her phone number and email. She's been around for some time in terms of her legislative service. And it also has a list of the committees that she's going to be serving on this session, as well as the uh, scorecard from previous sessions. Now I'll scroll to the top here. And uh, what you'll see is a full list of 50 senators and 100 House members. If you are uh, unsure of who your House and Senate representative are, you can click on this hyperlink at the top, which will take you to open states where you can plug in your address and it'll list out uh, who those members are. Additionally, um, we know that this hearing tomorrow will be taking place in, oh gosh. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, make sure that's turned off. We know that the uh, hearing tomorrow will be taking place in Senate tax. Um, and so if I click on Senate tax on the right hand side here, I can see a full list of every Senator who is going to be serving on that committee with their contact information. So you can have a better idea of uh, who, who your audience is if you want to testify on that particular bill. Um, <coughs> and then, uh, I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to turn off my phone here. Um, I think that's a good idea. <laughs> okay. Okay. I've gone through. Sir, can I ask a quick question? Yes. Um, uh, House Bill 17 and Senate Bill 7, are they pretty much the same thing? I called in about House Bill 17 today to express support for it. Well, I uh, am going to defer that question to Connor, who has a much better grasp of the two bills and uh, the actual policy implications. Uh, no. Well, I can see where your confusion stems from. They are pretty similar in some respects, but the alternative energy tax credit just deals with uh, those residences that rely on renewables, uh, such as solar, wind, et cetera. The SB7 is about the conservation tax credit, which is just primarily about energy conservation. So if you um, are someone that is uh, exceptional at energy conservation, some sort of residence or something like that, so I could just do the same thing, call up the number and say, tell the Senate Taxation Committee I support SB7? Yes, that, is, that would be incredibly helpful. Yes. So always these little descriptions will say which committee it's in front of. And so you can just call and say, please give the committee my message that I support this bill. Yes. And of course, like uh, I demonstrated earlier, if you prefer th for that to be written testimony, you're welcome to do that. And oral testimony, uh, you can do that as well, whichever you prefer. Do you have a feeling for whether the legislators really look at their phone messages? That's, that's hard to say, and I think depends on the legislator. So I would say the safer bet is always to testify orally if you have the time to do that. I understand not everyone does, um, but I will, I do think that would be the best way to get their attention. Hopefully that answers your question. And, you know, a lot of legislators do, uh, to the best of their ability, try and uh, listen to their phone messages. And if you call a switchboard, they get those messages and they will try to listen to them. So it's, it's fairly mm -hmm. accessible. Some will ignore, but I think you can make an assumption that most uh, legislators will see what uh, it is that you're doing. The, position you that you want them to take. Yeah, I didn't think that they recorded what I said. I think she just wrote it, wrote it down. So I wondered if they got a summary of like, you received 10 calls in favor of thus and such. Honestly, usually they don't do that in regular sessions. And I assume for people who are in the Capitol building, they're going to have the same system they always have, which is they give them a slip of paper for each person who calls on each bill. Okay. But in a pandemic, you're going to have the generally most of the Democrats are off campus. They are not present. They are participating huh. also remotely. 
So they're probably going to get something in their inbox, but I would expect each one will be unique. Um, okay. Is there still a way this year on the, um, on the ledge.mt.gov site to um, be able to email everybody in the committee in one shot? I think that was available last time. Durf, do you know the answer to that? Yeah, I think that there is. Um, uh, yes, there should still be. I, I doubt they took that feature down. Um, and I'll work on finding that while we answer another um, question. So I actually just found the answer to that. So when oh, you're great. on the homepage I was on earlier, uh, to the right of request to testify, there's another box that says send a web message to a legislator slash committee. Click that box. And when, after you fill out your info, your name, address, et cetera, at the bottom of that screen, uh, there will be the option to send the message to a legislator or the committee. And that's when you choose which your preference would be. Is that on your, um your little bill summary. <clears throat> it will be. <laughs> I don't think that we have that how to email the whole committee. But Durf, if you're, or, I don't want to cut you short, but if you're done, can you show people where our little summary is for how to lobby on our website that they could download? Yep. So if you just click on the very top menu, Montana legislature. The second paragraph here, want some tips on how to lobby during the 2021 Montana legislative session, session? see our fact sheet. And there this, it is. This fact sheet has a lot of the information that you're gonna need. Um, it's a good cheat sheet. So it gives you the website for legislative services. It, talks about how to leave a legislator a message, both via phone and via the website. Um, it gives you the governor's phone number and it gives you MEIC's legislative bill tracker. Um, you can find all the contact information by clicking on this link here, the, the MEIC website link in that paragraph, the blue, um, that Jerf just showed you. So that, right there, I think in a nutshell, is some of the best ways you're gonna to find to uh, contact legislators. And that website messaging allows you to either send it to an individual or to send a message to the whole committee. Um, one, one thing to keep in mind is if you, ha you have to register by noon the day before the hearing, but you're not ready to give them your written testimony yet, you can upload your written testimony at a later time. But when you do that, you have to re-register. It doesn't matter. You're re-registering for the same hearing. You are already on the list. You are there at noon, but it, you can, um, in your subsequent registration, you can include uh, your written testimony or documents that you think are useful. Those will get to committee members. It's just after that noon deadline the previous day, they will not have that in their hands during the hearing, but they will get that later. And I, in the chat function, somebody said, you know, is orally or, or, or written more persuasive? Well, oral is usually more persuasive unless you don't get the time to testify. And as we all know, um, as the legislature gets busy, and some of these bills get big, you may not have time to testify. So it might be the, the best thing you can do is to submit your written testimony um, just in case you don't get a chance to also uh, testify orally. Um, and I think that's all. If, if that doesn't make sense, then let me know. Durf? I, I went to the page where you've got all the uh, committees listed and if you click on the committee it'll list everybody but I don't see where it allows you to email the whole committee at once. Yeah so to be clear there is a service provided by the state on the 
on the laws website. That is what, what I think was referenced before. Um, we will have independently opportunities to contact the entire committee on specific pieces of legislation. Alternatively, you can, if you would like to contact, for example, the Senate Energy and Telecommunications Committee, and as a whole, um, you can use the, the, what we have here, but you'll just have to copy and paste the email addresses for each individual in the committee. Boy, that'd be a great thing for an intern to do. Put them all together. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and right, up, right up there at the top where you've got all the people's names, just at the end say, or the whole committee, and have an intern <laughs> build that for you. <laughs> Any volunteers? <laughs> I'll see if I can find some students. That's volunteers. a great idea, Vicki. I, I think that we should do that. I do too, um, if it's not there. And one other thing is if you just want to watch hearings, you don't have to register. You don't have to do anything if you just want to watch. On that front page of the Legislative Services website, there is a button that says watch and listen to meetings. And it will take you to a, a, a page that shows you all the meetings that are going on at that moment. And you can click on any of them. You can either click on just the audio or you can click on the video and you can watch or you can listen to any meetings that are going on at any moment in time. Um, okay, that was a lot of information. We have five minutes left in the hour. I'm sorry it took so long. We're honing our own skills at trying to, to help people figure out how to do this while we're trying to figure it out ourselves. Um, but if anybody has any questions, you can either ask them now or you can send us an email and we will answer them. And I have a yeah. question. If we go back to the um, page that's on your website, that had um, a list of places to go, could those be made into hyperlinks? Yes, and yes, and Wilbur, I was doing that up until 4.30 this afternoon. I started hyperlinking and we had to get it up on the website. So we'll fix that, I promise. <laughs> it's okay, it just seemed to me that, you know, having to type in all of those addresses when we could just click on your hyperlink would be a, help right and i you know some people are not going to use a hyperlink so we need to have both because some people will print it out and some of us are old school we still print things out um, but yes i will hyperlink everything thanks and can i get clarification again you you said this twice but i if we want to register to testify we have to have um our testimony uh by noon the day before the hearing correct Partially correct. If you want to testify, you have to register to testify by noon the day before. You do not have to have written testimony at that time. You have to fill in the, the box that they give you that says written testimony. You have to write something. You could write the, you know, a zero in there if you want. You have to put something in that box. Otherwise, it won't let you register. But if you want to submit testimony, um, you can do it at that time when you first register for the hearing, or you could do it after you register. You can re-register again. Your first registration gets your foot in the door for being inside the hearing room um, via Zoom. The second one makes sure the committee gets it. But if you don't submit it to them by noon the day before, your written testimony by noon the day before, they will not have your testimony during the hearing. They won't receive your written testimony until after the hearing, but they will receive your written, written testimony. Does that- Okay, does that so, so if I wanted to submit to testimony either written or oral, uh, I'd have to register by noon the day before, but if I don't have it quite ready and I wanna then if, if I want, let's say I'm submitting written testimony and the next day I have the written testimony ready an hour before the committee meeting, I have to register again and submit it, but they'll still have it in their hands at that point? They, 
the legislators will not have it in their hand for the hearing. The only way you can have legislators have your written testimony in hand during the hearing is to submit it prior to noon the day before the hearing. Okay, okay. So we but, have to be on it. <laughs> yeah, no, right. It's, it's a pain. Um, this is not easy and it's gonna be very difficult for people to participate, um, unfortunately. Thanks. So I have a question. I think I know the answer to you can't, can you do both oral and written? I think you can. Yes. Okay. Can. Yeah. Thanks. And they recommend doing both in case you, they don't give you time to testify. You know, just yeah. keep in mind that some of these legislators earlier this week said they weren't going to accept any testimony via zoom. Um, these guys are mad that people are, are afraid to come to the Capitol and, and be maskless in committee rooms. So some of these some of these committee chairs are going to be hostile to people testifying via Zoom. So if you really want something in their hands, um, I, I submit it in writing because I don't know how they're going to treat Zoom people, especially as they get really short tempered as the session goes on. I know it's 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 mind boggling that people don't believe there's an actual pandemic going on. I know I don't get it. <laughs> uh, we're at the top of the hour at this point. I just want to reiterate, uh, we need feedback from all of you uh, to make sure that we're doing what we can. And so if you notice any mistakes, if you notice something that can be more helpful, please let us know. Our emails are on our website um, or you can call us and uh, hopefully improve the ability for all of you to access all this legislative information. We're all gonna do our best. We are. And of course, <laughs> if you have any questions about how to testify, how to participate, like Dirk said, feel free to send us an email, but I also wanna be a resource for that. So keep me in mind, just send me an email. I'm more than happy to answer any questions regarding that. And moving forward next week, we're gonna do something very similar, hopefully less glitchy. Um, next Thursday at five, we're going to do a similar presentation to this with a few little updates on bills that have since popped um, between now and then. But going forward every Thursday at five o'clock, we're going to give a quick rundown of the bills we're working on. Um, mm -hmm. And you guys can ask questions um, if you have them. You can submit questions in advance if you have them. Uh, we just want to make sure that we find ways to help you know what's going on. If you have suggestions on how to do that better, like Durf said, please let us know. And quick question for you. Um, are you going to be sending out alerts? Because I know things come up at the last and people need to take action. <laughs> yes, we are going to do a number of things. We're going to do um, alerts as necessary, you know, quick, especially email alerts. We will do some alerts that are hard copy, um, you know, like Northwestern's bill last session. We had enough time. So we could send out a paper alert to our members who are not um, on the web. We are going to be doing capital monitors periodically. We will try, we're try, gonna try to do every Monday morning, three things you can do this week um, to help you know what we think the highest priorities are. Um, and we will have our website. So we're trying to find lots of ways to connect with you, give you information. Most of that will be electronic, but some of it will be um, for those who aren't on computers. And for those of you on Facebook and Twitter, we're going to try and keep that updated too. Wish us luck. <laughs> are, are Thank you. you. Thank you. you. Good luck. <laughs> are you guys testifying in person on anything? As of now, no. Um, I just, it's not worth people's help. Yeah, it's going to be pretty limited that we go up there. I could see potentially a really big bill and their, you know, Zoom is quirky and not working and running up there giving testimony and immediately leaving. But I, ideally, no, we will not be in the Capitol. There are a lot of unmasked people in the Capitol. <laughs> there are a lot. <laughs> and we're hearing rumors that people are getting sick at this point. Yeah, and it, folks with the new variants and everything like that, it's may get worse before it gets better. So right. thank you, take care of yourselves. You're too valuable. 
<laughs> well, all of you are. I see all your faces on here and I know all of you and I thank you for being here and for being members and supporting us and doing everything you do in your worlds to make this a better place. Uh, go Biden. <laughs> <laughs> Lily Haynes asked uh, where will a recording of this meeting be available. Please uh, send an email to me and I'll make a note that you want a recording of this video and I can send it to you. However, I will uh, note that uh, just like the legislative session, we're working out the kinks with these training sessions. So honestly, next week's might be even better. So if you want a more informative session, that might be better than re-listening re to this one or re-watching this one. But email us. All of our emails are our first letter of our first name and our last name, followed by at meic.org. So feel free to email us or call us. Thank you all. Have a safe and good evening. <laughs> Thanks, you all. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.